Let's talk about the Canon T6S versus the Nikon D5500. Let's start with the bottom line of both of these cameras. They offer a friendly introduction to DSLRs and provide very good image quality. You really can't go wrong picking one over the other unless you want smooth and silent focus during video. Really, only the Canon provides that. The Nikon, not so much. Let's run through a more complete comparison. The physical differences are noticeable, with Nikon opting to go to their smallest DSLR yet. The D5500 combined with that kit lens that offers a retractable design provides a nicely portable DSLR. Weight-wise, however, they end up feeling very similar in the hand, though the Nikon does offer some modest weight savings. If you travel lots and need to carry your gear, that might be something worth considering. With the smaller size of the Nikon does come a few sacrifices. Unlocking that kit lens is a required extra step before you can use the camera, and the manual control of this camera is not nearly as friendly as the Canon, especially this T6S. It's worth noting that Nikon has provided that touchscreen function that lets you use it when the camera's up to your eye. This does give you a nice customizable option that you can use to get the camera to be more manually friendly. The Canon T6S with its top LCD and rear dial feels much more like a professional level camera and full manual control is easy and efficient. Both cameras feel nice in the hand and generally I prefer the feel of the Canon style grip, wider and rounder, but the Nikon D5500 has a really nice deep grip that gives you something to grasp despite the smaller size. Inside they both offer 24 megapixel sensors, but the Nikon does not have an anti-aliasing filter. In theory, this should mean its images are sharper than the Canon. In day-to-day -day shooting, I notice very little difference between the two, but technically the Nikon is capable of sharper images. Low light performance is about the same until you start getting up around 3200 and the Nikon pulls away and performs noticeably better and very well at high ISOs. Let's compare the focusing now. On paper, it might sound like the Nikon with 39 focus points easily beats Canon's 19, but all of those Canon points are higher accuracy cross type and Nikon only offers nine cross type. Again, in real world shooting through the viewfinder, autofocus is very similar between the two cameras. If I had to pick a winner, it seems like Canon is just a little faster and more accurate at times, but the difference is very slight. Where you do see a large difference in focusing capabilities is live view. Canon provides excellent live view focusing, great at tracking moving subjects, and as I showed in the opening shot, that focus is silent and smooth when you're using one of their STM kit lenses. Nikon cannot match that, and if it's important to you to have a camcorder-like focusing experience for video, the Canon is a clear winner. Other movie features that we want to talk about, Nikon does offer 1080 at 60p. Canon is still limited to just 30p, but offers a digital zoom, which is a 3x lossless. It can get you much closer to whatever you're filming with no loss in quality. Battery life is a clear strength for the Nikon offering almost double the number of shots versus the Canon. 820 versus just 440 in the Canon. Nikon also has additional scenes and effect modes. Personally, I find these rather gimmicky and you can get much better results just shooting without effects turned on and using so software to post-process your photos the way you want. But if you are dying to create selective color images in camera, the Nikon does let you does do that and also offers a built-in intervalometer. And while it is somewhat limited, it does get you started shooting time lapses without having to carry any additional gear. And thankfully, both now have miniature movie mode, so I can stop listing that as an advantage to Nikon. Both also offer Wi-Fi and provide smartphone apps. And here's another clear strength of the Canon. You have, if you wish, complete manual control of the camera, changing any of the settings from your smartphone or tablet. The Nikon app is much more limited with just touch to focus and take a picture. This might be easily updated in the future, but right now the Nikon wireless mobile utility doesn't offer much utility. Those are the differences worth mentioning. Have you been keeping track of the score? I haven't, as I believe each point in the win or loss column carries different values depending on your needs. If you'd like to see all of these differences in writing, plus a few more that didn't make the video, visit photorec.tv slash T6S versus D5500. And finally, 
I want to ask you, why are you researching these two cameras? Is it just for better quality photos? Have you considered mirrorless options? For many years, these DSLRs were the default choice when you wanted better image quality. But we have options now like the Sony a6000, the Fuji X-T10 that provide similar image quality in a smaller, lighter body that sometimes even offers better features. I have a link to my Sony a6000 review below along with complete reviews of both the Nikon D5500 and the Canon T6S, linked below and at the end of this video. I want to know from you all, which one will you buy or would you buy if you were shopping and why? Leave that answer down below as a comment. I'm going to be collecting the best of those to share on our weekly live show, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And if you appreciated this review, take two seconds to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not already a subscriber, push that button to be notified of future reviews, tips, tricks, and photography tutorials. You can also follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes. And if you plan to purchase, using my links below is an easy way to thank me and cost you nothing extra. Thanks for watching.